But it is going to focus on a, a, a third part of the Trinity that without that part of the Trinity, Christ would have never been able to come up out of the grave. And that is nothing but the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's that same power that the church is in desperate need of once again today especially the American church. Now, I'm going to share a lot of scripture, and I was reading an article this week. Uh, I, I wished I would have wrote the gentleman's name down, and it just began to inspire me, so I, I began to, to uh, take some of his thoughts uh, 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 about what he had to say of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to share a, a portion of that with you today. So we are here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give Him another good round of applause. And, and I know that you have come expecting a program, but you get me. So just, just bear with me. I, I, I really wasn't expecting to preach, but don't let that concern you that this message is not from God. I sought God, and once again, God answered in a wonderful way. And immediately the Lord began to help me, and even though I, 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 I don't have a program or I'm not spending much time speaking, of the event and if you were here at 10 o'clock I, I, I made several references that were not just to focus on the event but all of the life of Jesus and all the parts that make God who God is so I will be speaking of the resurrection power of God the power that brought Jesus Christ the, the Yeshua HaMashiach that brought him up out of the grave on the third day. That again validated everything that was written by the prophets. It validated everything that Jesus had spoke for the three, three and a half years that we know that he worked there in the ministry. It validated everything so much so that we know because there was only maybe 100 or or 200, whatever the references is, I can't remember, of his first coming, and they all hit it 100%. And there are three times as many references of his second coming. So I will tell you, just as it validated everything that they said and what Jesus said, it also is validating what is soon to come to this earth. This earth is, is moaning and groaning and moving and shaking because it is getting ready to receive its creator once again on this earth, Jesus Christ. And it's that resurrection power of God that, that brought him up, that's going to bring him back, that's going to get this earth ready and in place. And it's this power that the church must once again Find. It's been lost. And I don't want to come across today with any negativity, but I want to identify the one thing that's missing, and it's a big one. And it truly is the supernatural, wonder working power of God. The third part of the trinity. You and I are trying to fix our homes. We're trying to fix our families. We're trying to fix our churches. We're trying to fix this nation. And we're trying to fix it by methods that we even pull out of the Word of God. Straight from the Bible. But here we stand together here on Resurrection Sunday... And we still find ourselves in want, do we not? Remember the psalmist told us in Psalms 23 that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And here we are, 
doing things the biblical way, but finding ourselves in want. The problem is that the Holy Spirit is not backing us up. Now this message may go quick and it may go long. But I will tell you, whatever the case may be, it is a fact of the matter that we are working and, and working hard and trying and doing and we've exhausted ourselves and nothing is changing because God is not backing us up. Hmm. Now, I'm not going to stay there. He's not putting his seal of approval on our ideas and our methods. We can quote, we can read the Bible. All day we can attempt to follow the concepts of the Bible. But unless we are being plugged into the Holy Spirit of God, we will find ourselves in want. The problem is not with the Word, the problem is with you and I. And I don't mean that in a negative way because I will tell you I'm speaking from a point of view is I believe everyone sitting here today is truly wanting to know why we are still in the shape that we are in. Whether it's our, our, our individual life, whether it's our family, whether it's our finances, whether it's our health, whether it's our nation, whatever the case, we are wondering, God, I'm doing everything I know to do and I'm finding myself still in want so if the problem is with us and it is then we need to figure this thing out I realize and I believe everyone here or most everyone realizes that we are living in a crisis ridden age even though it's the last days, but I will tell you, we can still be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. That same power that took Jesus out of the tomb, that rolled that rock away, that, that a man could not roll on his own, that moved the rock, that sent the angels, that heralded the coming, that, 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 that also ascended him some 40 days later is that same power that is available to you and I today. I believe that we are on the, the threshold. If, if we will plug in the American church, we can be part of it. I believe we're on the threshold of Joel's prophecy that God would send the latter rain. You might say, Pastor, that was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Well, I will tell you, that was only fulfilled in part. Read all of Joel's prophecy. There is still a latter rain, and it's this same resurrecting power that is coming to revive you, to revive me, to revive the church if we will just allow it to do this. And the problems are not just economic problems. They're not just political or social problems. Even now with everything going on in our school, it's not just an educational problem. The problem, the root of all the problems anyway in America is a spiritual problem. And as for the church, how much longer must we live like this before we start asking some questions? Asking the question of what can or what must I do? What can I do? What can I do to turn this morally bankrupt, sin-ridden generation back to God? And I'm not talking about the young people when I say this sin-ridden generation. Let me tell you, the, the, we, we're the ones that mess the church up, not the kids today. And this thing started happening long before any of you and I were born because we walked away from the power of God. Now, again, 
I know this is Resurrection Sunday, and I know that, that, that we always focus on Jesus and the cross and Him rising on the third day. But I am telling you, we must go back and look a little closer of everything that Christ done. And how was He able to accomplish the things that He done that He told us to remember about Himself? He would have never accomplished any of it without the third part of the Trinity. Because they work in unison. One would not work without the other. So you and I are trying to do this with methods. Good methods. Biblical methods. But we're missing an, el an element. What must, or maybe rather we must search out a pathway to power. I want to see the power of God working back in the lives of His children once again. We must search out a pathway to victory where we start walking in the victory that God has given us that people will not be able to deny that we serve the one and true living God, that we serve the God that created everything that we see, that we serve the God that gives us victory, that, 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 that gives us this dynamic faith that has promised us not only that, that God will serve, that we will search out out and find this abundant life that's promised to us in John chapter 10 where Jesus is reminding us that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to have you to raise your hand, but every one of us could, that He has come into our life, and He has killed us, He has destroyed us, and He has made us miserable. But Jesus tells us, and I'll paraphrase a little bit, do not be worried, do not be dismayed, because I have come that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. But Jesus is not here walking in the flesh today, but He said, I must go away, and I go away so that He may come, and that He will bring remembrance of the things that I've said and done, and He will endue you with power that we may have the victory, that we may have the abundant life that God Himself promised you and I. We need to search these pathways out until we tap back into the power of God. Our anemic church needs to be turned to the old paths. And it's not the path that you might think. None of us are old enough to know the paths that I am speaking about. The paths that would make us look like the Acts church. It's past time for the church to awake. Jesus Christ is coming and He's coming soon. The countdown is closing in. He is coming and we better find the power of God or our kids and our grandkids are going to die and spend eternity in a devil's hell. How many of you Christians here today are satisfied just because you're going to heaven and, for, and refuse to think about your family, your friends, your children that are going to hell because of our anemic life that we are living? Hmm. Resurrection power. We'll turn that in to it doesn't sound like a negative or a hard statement, but it would turn it in to a zeal that would that would be birthed in us, that would cause us to, to, to move forward and to place ourselves and position ourselves where God can use us to the fullest of the extent. Listen, we need to find this power. May 14, 2018, there's, a, there's, there's one great event, or there's one great celebration, there's another great event, in my opinion, that will happen. First of all, May 14, 2018, Israel will celebrate its 70th year of independence, of being voted into the Union, or to the, voted into the UN. On May 14, 2018, 
the United States of America will be opening its embassy up in Jerusalem and calling this the capital city of Israel. This very well could usher in the 70th week of Daniel, which will cause this tribulation and these things to be start happening right before our eyes. And I'm going to tell you, when this comes, the power of darkness is going to be upon this earth like we have never seen. And the, the anemic Christian life is not going to get it done. Satan will, t he will take and eat our lunch for us if we are living the life that we are living today. You might say, Pastor, I'm going to be out of here. You may not be out of here when that begins to happen. Whatever the case may be, whether we're gone or whether we're here, while we are here, we need to find the power of God because there are some people that are going to be left behind that's going to have to know that there is a true power, wonder-working power, in the name of Jesus Christ, and it comes comes by way of the Holy Spirit that, that quickened the body, the flesh man of Jesus caused him to get up out of the grave. That's the same power that you and I have available to us today. Many are expecting this will usher in a bloodbath. And I'm thinking they already have them. But uh, they're expecting it to be so bad. I believe that's why our, our president has decided he's not going to attend that event. Whatever the case may be, it's, 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 it's things being lined up and, and, and positioned and, and ready because this earth is groaning for the Lord to soon to return. We must today seek the face of God. We must hear His voice. We must submit to His will. We must not allow another day to go by without hearing the voice of God. And if we can't hear it, we must tell Tell the Lord, I am not moving till I hear from you. God is still seeking a man that will make up a hedge and stand in the gap in Ezekiel 22 30. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up a hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. He's seeking for men and women. And by the way, I'm going to say man most of the time, but I also mean women. But I am talking to the men. Most of you women got this figured out much better than we do. We love to talk about the power. But our power kind of looks like my muscle. Kind of droops the wrong way. Men who can be clothed with his power and begin to speak with his authority. We need men with a genuine touch of heaven that matches the times that we live on earth. Folks, we do not need any more messages how God wants you to have this or God wants you to have that or God wants you to be happy and God doesn't want you to be sad. Let me tell you, if Jesus Christ coming to earth and dying on your behalf, on my behalf, is not enough to make you joyful, then I promise you a car, a happy or a good job is not going to get it done. See, we need some men that, is, that, 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 that that's not just looking for this feel-good message or, or, or looking for the life that there's not going to be any struggles. Folks, the Christian life is going to be a struggle. It is a struggle. You know why? Because you're working against the grain. It's like trying to get in a boat and row upstream. Unfortunately, the church is going downstream with the world. It must turn about and start moving up. That type of message that God wants you to, 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 to just uh, uh, give you a bed of roses and He wants you to just have pie in the sky and, and name it and claim it. That message doesn't line up with the day we are living in. 
We need men of God that if they don't know how, they must learn how to cooperate with God's moral and spiritual laws. We need men who will walk in one direction, God's direction. This is only going to happen through the power of God. You're not going to fabricate this type of work. Men who will follow one goal. That is God's goal. See, the world is waiting. America is waiting. Our families are waiting. Matter of fact, I think God is waiting for such a man who is willing to pay the price for the power of God that will buckle up his spiritual armor and fully follow his great commander-in-chief. And I'm not talking about Donald Trump as much as I like Donald Trump. I am talking about Jesus Christ that will follow him into battle until the very end. No shortcuts. We will have to humble ourselves, pray and seek His face, turn from our wicked ways we can read. In 2 Chronicles, it says, If my people, that doesn't mean the people of the world, but God's people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin. Heal their land. There must be a spiritual awakening to overcome our moral lapse. Revival, resurrection, power, revival is the only remedy for the disease of spiritual indifference. And I'm going to tell you, I have been praying since yesterday because I didn't write this until yesterday that today would be the day. that we get it. That we get the Holy Spirit's outpouring and we understand that it is the key to blessings. Without this, we will remain stagnant. We need a quickening from God on this resurrection day. Nine times in the psalmist says in Psalms 119, ask God to quicken him. We need this quickening. The Bible has much to say about the power and who it belongs to. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 says, For our gospel came not to you in word only but in power. This is what I'm talking to about. There's nothing wrong with the Word, but the Word without the power of God is nothing but words. Resurrection power. Let me tell you, I, 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 it's like this. You, you open the Bible up. You open the Bible up to Genesis chapter 1, if I can find it. That is the first book in the Bible, I believe. Genesis chapter 1. And I believe you come to a verse that says, In the beginning... And it, and, it, and, it, and it goes just a little bit further. And it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness on the face of the earth, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So what the Bible is telling us there, that the earth was formed, it didn't have anything, it was void, and the Spirit of God was just hovering, and you had the Word of God. Well, the Word was finally spoken, but the Spirit of God attached itself to the Word, and then it created everything that you and I see today. We we must have the power of God to go along with the Word of God. Then the church will start being the church of the book of Acts. But it's not going to happen without that power that brought Jesus out of the grave. It's not going to happen any other way. That same power, not any other power. We can't fabricate that power. We can't buy that power. We can't fill this church up and do that. We can't build a bigger church and do that. It must come from the source, from God Himself. So we see that Paul preached not only a word, but in power. And the Lord said in Zechariah chapter 4 and 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit. And Jesus in Luke 4 and 14 said, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And in Acts 4 and 33 it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. 
that same power. How desperately we need this power today. The power of the Holy Spirit is the cure for our weakness and spiritual debilitation. And folks, this message is about as ABC as it comes. Sin has cut, clipped, removed our spiritual wings and left us immobilized. We can't move. And the Holy Spirit is now the remedy to our empty, our empty, helpless lives that are lacking victory. And the great thing about this, we read in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, it tells us, And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the great thing about this, God's power is not only possible, but it is promised. That's not a promise from the pastor. That's a promise from God. If we only get linked up, He would give us the boldness. If we get linked up, He would give us the witness and the wisdom to reach our family. If we would get linked up, we, could, we would be made witnesses for Him and it wouldn't be responses like, well, that's just not me. Because when the power of God gets a hold of you, it's not you. It's God working through you. And the joy will bubble out from among you and you will have no choice but to speak. And then He will give us that we see the fruit of the Spirit that you read about in Galatians chapter 5. And we know what these, these fruits are. And John, Jesus reminded us in John chapter 7, this power, this resurrection power that, that will give us springs of living water that just flows forth. Can you imagine your life bubbling over with blessings? Let today, this Resurrection Sunday, be the day that you start having more days of blessings than days of cursings. More days of joy and peace than days of turmoil and stress. Let today be the start. What a better day than the day that Jesus brought life and brought life to the world that, that now gave the world an opportunity to have communion with the Father once again. What greater day to start turning our life toward Him. God not only wants us to be born of the Spirit, but He wants us to be filled with the Spirit. And listen, I am not talking about some type of emotional experience, and I'm not going to go through all that. I'm not talking about that, that we, we get a little bit excited. I'm not talking about, listen guys, we, we, we got so completely, and, and, and you may not like this statement, and I, I'll sure be, be available to, to discuss it with you. But I, I remember, not so much as a child, but as an adult, when I got saved, I remember hearing statements and making statements, Oh, what a wonderful service we had today. There wasn't even any preaching. How many has heard that before? This is not filled with the Holy Spirit I'm talking about. Now, it's great. We're emotional beings, and, that, and we love that emotional high. That's not going to change anything. I am talking about being filled with a spirit that will that that will cause families to be restored, that will cause churches to change, that will cause nations to be built, that will cause us to become so winning people with the power of God. And it's here for just the asking. 
The greatest need of the hour is for spirit-filled Christians. God is waiting to pour out His power on us that will deliver us from ourself and from our sin. If we would just submit, we could actually relive the book of Acts and experience the power of God. Listen, guys, we do not have to be spiritually poor or bankrupt. We, we, we don't have to live beneath our, 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 our godly privileges. We don't have to wander in spiritual darkness. We don't have to be the spiritual lightweight. We can be the giants. What, what about this? Satan sends out 12 spies to come and check us out. To check the church out. And they report back to him with the message. They appear as giants and we appear as grasshoppers. Hmm. You know where I got that from, don't you? See, in the, in the wilderness, they went to the promised land and came back and reported to Moses, the enemy looks like giants and we look like grasshoppers. Let's flip that on them. That happens with the power of God. Has no other choice. May God give you and I a new, and I emphasize new encounter with Himself where the standards of His Word are exceedingly high. May God call you and I to a higher life. We need a fresh visitation. We need a cry out before God like we have never cried out in our life. In Psalms 85 and 6, the Bible says, Lord, would you revive us? Will thou not revive us Again, I could go on and on and on. This isn't what I do. This is who I am. I could stand here and talk about this, but it's time to stop talking about things and it's time to start living in the power of God. And what better day to start than this day? Again, this is not your, definitely not a, a skit and it's not a typical uh, uh, Easter morning service, but it does doesn't matter. All of God's Word is centered around Jesus Christ, and it's centered around Him at the cross, Him resurrecting on the third day, and we can walk in the power that He sent to you and I. It is available for the asking. Bottom line, it is available, but there are some requirements. We cannot live our own life. We must live His life. And I will tell you, we won't have to worry about all the battles we're trying to fight. We just have to show up and God will do the fighting. I pray today that I look back in history is the day that, that Roger Burks started a new encounter with Jesus Christ. I've had times in my life that has completely turned my life around. That didn't look like anything that I thought it would or anything that I would have wanted, but I would not go back and change anything now. We've tasted a little of God's power in our life. We need to be walking and living in that power daily. Walk in the Spirit live in the Spirit. Again, I thank you for coming, Terry. You guys have a song. Terry and Christy is, is, is going to end us with a song.